<laughs> Turning left or right? <laughs> I hear the blinker. That's funny. <laughs> okay. So we are, okay, cool. We are live on YouTube today. So I hope it's working. If not, oh well. So good morning <laughs> to today's Monday morning inspiration, Monday's inspiration as I call it now because we might be moving to this time of the day. Um, all right, so it is all about the joy of creation and the magic of art, creativity, and play. The magic of play, right? The magic of play and the joy of creation. So much in this reality is about the judgment of creation and how joyful is that? <laughs> Not. So I'm Bettina Medini. I'm your host here on Monday's Inspiration. And I am broadcasting this from one of my studio spaces. And I also always have some of my art with me. You see on the side here, one of my paintings that is not quite finished yet. And um, so what contribution can I be to you all out there in the world so that you can tap into you and what you know about creation. So whether you are artists or cooks or writers or sculptors or like uh, digital artists, musicians. Um, it's so funny, my chair is touching the easel and it makes this squeaky noise. Well, I hope you don't hear that. <laughs> it is slightly distracting for me. Anyway, so I am talking to all of you creators out there and also to all of you who are not in the arts. To me, life is an art. It is the art of living. Um, where we actually could, if we chose, be in a, not just be in, but we could be a joyful space of possibility. How many of you have learned that whatever is joyful for you is not possible or it's wrong or it's oh you are a dreamer you got to be real you are not real you are totally out of it and certainly right now how many people are embracing the space of joy it is almost that we need to be very courageous to be joyful now we don't have to like hysterically giggle all the time which to me is not joy by the way, but it's, it's a space that we can be where we don't allow anybody else's judge, judgments or mm, points of view. We don't allow them to spoil our sense of possibility where you know, you all know that something else is possible. How much of that have you put on some back burner? So today I would like to talk about what powers have we hidden in Avalon? And you may or may not be familiar with, it's a really fabulous book. It's one of my favorites. And I think it might be time for me after years now to read it yet another time. It is Marion Zimmer Bradley. Um, it's the Brooms of Avalon. And it's sort of, it's this legend of this mystical island where the people who lived there, um, they were women, they were priestesses, and, and they knew a lot about um, creation, let's say like this. It is about um, magic and it's about being, being with the earth very much, which is also the magic that I love to talk about when we when we can really connect with nature, connect with the earth, connect with animals and talk with them, talk with flowers, talk with the herbs, talk with your garden and, and also receive what 
what they know, what they desire, what they require. So it's a lot, this, this is what I talk when I, what I mean when I talk about magic. And it's very much what Marion Zimmer Bradley also refers to in her beautiful novels. It's a novel. And so it's um, the brooms of, like the fogs, right? The brooms of Avalon. And it was preceded by another book. Um, I think it is, well, sometimes it's hard for me to translate the German versions because I read it back then in German. In German. Um, it's something like, same author, the, the Forests of Albion. That is the first book and then The Rooms of Avalon, which both are very, very famous books. And so if it is like to you to check into them, check them out. So it is this island that is, as people less and less believe in magic and trust their knowing, this island is drifting into the fogs, into the rooms, and it is disappearing as a legend. It is gone now. It has, it has left this reality and sort of like just get the energy of that, get the space of that. What have we all cast out of our lives that we have now put into fantasy, into legends and lore, into the way long forgotten past that is put there and that we left there as something that is woo woo or something that is not real, that is a fantasy and that belongs into the legends of King Arthur or something. So, and is it actually all true that it's all fairy tale and legend? And I wonder what has been created, maybe even intentionally by some folks for whatever reason, doesn't matter, where we, we learned that it is actually unreal. Wow, there is, wow, the sun is just hitting a rock out there and there's this little tiny green leaf that is just in a very gentle sun lit spot on the rock that is so pretty and that it is the energy from it is such a kindness the sun is very kind it's sort of I think it's even a reflection of the sunlight through the windows or something it looks really very magical wow I wonder whether I can take a picture of it I have no idea so while, while I continue talking, I will just a little bit multitask and, but I think it is too far away through the glass and everything. So, oh, it's so pretty. Okay, so let's see what that does. It is the, the, the moment that we, we talk about this right now, see what, what is showing up when we, it really caught my attention and it, it really pulled me in. So I had to like, really look when when we embrace that possibility of a very real um and gentle and almost unnoticeable conversation always going on with nature beings like a little tiny leaf drawing in your attention. Like the question that I'm now asking is, wow, what contribution can I be to this, to this tiny green leaf on November 22nd? What contribution can I be to the rock? What contribution can we all be right now to the earth? And what can we receive from the earth? What can we receive from the tiniest element, like a blade of grass or um, a, a tiny, like beautiful crystal in the sand, which every little sand grain is a crystal, right? So what can we receive and what can we gift to the earth and the earth elements? That is a power that we have totally cast out. Nobody is talking about it. Or did you hear that when you grew up, 
And if so, gosh, you are one of the few lucky ones. And I have to say, I'm very happy if, if that was part of your reality. Um, so many people don't have this as their reality where we ask a question and we pay attention. Paying attention is also a power. When you, know, when you walk in the woods, you walk on the land and you pay attention, what can actually come to you? What can you perceive? It is a perception, like perception is something that nobody is also talking about. Like when the perception was when I got this like feather touch off that made me actually turn my head and look out there and, and see this, this leaf on the rock with the light on it. That is a feather touch. I could have um, ignored it and brushed over it saying like, oh, I'm on a YouTube live. I must not be distracted. I have to stay focused. I have to blah, blah, blah. I must not blah, blah, blah. I have to keep going. That is when we ignore the communication. And we also mm, brush over what we perceive. And it could just be Okay, so how can you be more perceptive? If you just quickly acknowledge, sometimes it might be a moment when you cannot like talk. I use this also as an example, right? Sometimes it might just not be possible to go to the little leaf and like, you know, caress it or whatever. Yet acknowledge it for a moment. Like, wow, there's this, oh, that's so pretty. And you keep going. And with each acknowledgement of also your perception and then asking, wow, what, what else can I perceive? And then you keep going about your day. This acknowledgement alone will open the space for more things to come to you and for you to be more aware and to perceive many more feather touches that are actually everywhere around you, but we don't pay attention. So what power did you hide in this legendary island with all its mists and fogs and brooms that you can now bring back? Did somebody say to you, you are weird, you are out of it, you are like strange? No, well, are you willing to be strange? What, what if that is a greatness? Being weird is actually a greatness. This is you, <laughs> your being. Acknowledging a little leaf is something where some people might say, well, she's really out of it. She's not real. And is that true? And everywhere you have made it true, you believe them and you tried so hard to be their friends or be part of that group. And you wanted so dearly to, to be one of the cheerleaders or whatever. Will you please let that go? It is not you, you are not a cheerleader. <laughs> you might be your own cheerleader with your own little pom-poms in the woods. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have these funny images. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted again. <laughs> hmm. oh, which is actually a joyful distraction. It's funny. It, it makes me smile. And the other day I read, um, don't ever regret anything that made you smile, which is really beautiful, right? Something that made that makes you smile is actually, wow, how much more of this can I have in my life? Bring on more universe, show me more things that make me smile. And as you go with that, you will notice how, how your world changes. You, you might find that you don't take negativity and drama so serious anymore. It's like, okay, these people make a choice Yet it is all this drama and this trauma that made this 
foggy, misty island of beauty and nature creation drift away into the fogs, into the legends, into the lores, where this reality said, okay, you can exist, but only as a legend. It's a place that didn't even really exist, but you can talk about it in the fantasy novels. That's okay. So people can fantasize. And then we tell them it's a fantasy. It's not real. And certainly they don't have these powers, which means you don't have these powers. Is that real? Like, is it real for you? Have you made it real? What if it is actually part of you being you where you, you notice the feather falling on the ground and you go there and you touch it and you look at it, you marvel at it. And then you pick it up or you don't. Maybe you plant it somewhere, you put it somewhere in the ground by your flowers or you just acknowledge it. And then you put it on your hand and you blow it into its trail again so it can keep flying, right? That, that paying attention. What if things are showing up for you? It's not that, oh, I saw this animal, but what if this animal actually showed itself to you? Is this changing something for you? What if all these gorgeous, beautiful creatures are showing themselves to you? If there was ever a rare animal, a very shy, wild animal showing up on your trail, well, guess what? It, this animal is not stupid. It has smelled you miles away. It has heard you. It has for sure noticed that you are coming along. So do you think it was stupid to jump on your trail and be there and, oh, I saw a blah, blah, blah. What if it showed itself to you? Like saying, hello, hi, beautiful, there you are. And then it jumped on. It's not like staying there. And that's also this acknowledgement, right? Where we don't have to sit there and like go deep with it or whatever and make it an hour meditation. No, it's a, the acknowledgement is as fast as, oh, hello, there you are. Have a wonderful life. What can I contribute to you? <laughs> And you go about like it's then it becomes part of your journey where there's no heaviness, there's no obligation. You don't have to like, I don't know, walk in circles 50 times to the left and then 100 times to the right and make an offering or whatever. No, it's you can, of course, I don't make it wrong, right? Whatever works for you. Yet what I'm saying is there is this lightness of a possibility where if it is light to you to leave like a candy there on the rock for the creatures, do it. Like, or a seed for the chipmunks, do it, right? It, it's following this lightness. You don't have to, but you can. The chipmunks will not make you wrong if you don't leave a seed. The chipmunks though will be very grateful if you just acknowledge them. Hey, you are so beautiful, wow. The squirrels will be joyful. They don't expect anything from us. They are being who they are and they receive everything. They receive our judgment, whether it's positive or negative. Hmm. Do you have any questions here, those who are with me live? So are you all willing to bring these powers that you have hidden in the legendary mists to you now? Embrace them and ask for more of it. Wow, I wonder, what are my powers? What do I know? What are my gifts? that no one has ever told me. Oh, 
great way to begin this journey is to simply ask the earth, earth, what do you know about me? What do you know about my gifts and my capacities, the capacities of my body? What have you hidden in the legendary fogs and mists that uh, is trying to come up behind the pains in your body? Hmm. Hmm. And wherever you don't allow this to bubble up and show up, will you please let that go? Thank you. It could also be what, what have you hidden in the legends? What, what parts of you, what joyful, potent parts of you have you hidden in the legends that are showing up with the pain in your art studio. In the arts, there's so much judgment. Artists are constantly judging. Oh, I don't do this right. I don't do that right. And in the process of judgment, the art becomes very solid, repetitive, tight. And what is possible? What, what can you embrace about you that would loosen up and melt the solidity in your life, whether it's, you know, in your art studio or your office or wherever in your life that would melt the solidity in your life so that your joy and happiness and magic has a chance to thrive. <laughs> this even rhymes. Oh, well, and so everything that doesn't allow that, will you please undo it now? Just like that, choose just like, okay, I let this go. Yes? <laughs> what powers have you hidden in the mists of Avalon that you can now bring to you and ask to come forth that you can reunite with and even maybe expand and grow and nurture and care for into the future. I wonder, so I hope this Monday's inspiration is a contribution to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, you can contact me via YouTube or Facebook. Contact me, I don't know, via my website. So there are 50 million ways. Ask questions, let me know. And other than that, I wish you a great week. I see you next Monday. Or maybe you want to come to one of my art classes. I have one starting this Saturday and Sunday, you can choose to only do Saturday or you can do both days. There are options. There's choice. Yes, you can choose. And if it's light to you, come hop on and let's play. I adore you all. Please keep creating, never give up. And I see you soon. Have a wonderful week and day. Bye.